The window. I'll try and be as concise as possible but give all the details. First about me. I've recently been made redundant from job I'd had for 12 years. It hit hard and I've taken a lower pay job to make sure we can afford the rent, bills, food etc. My wife was in a good job and left to move to a new role on more money. Now being completely honest I've been struggling with self, esteem issue and such since the redundancy. Nothing major but certainly lost confidence and feeling pretty worthless. All this follows on from a family argument which has been fairly nasty going on over the last year with some, unfairly, aimed at my wife. Anyway, we have children and my wife had a tough time with baby blues and her friendships have dwindled. She still has friends but doesn't really see them often, certainly not for girls' nights, and is feeling isolated. I've tried to get her to take up hobbies, attend classes, etc. and she has tried but eventually it all seems to die away and we're left with her feeling down. So, she moved to her new job and she perks up as it's a challenge, something her old place wasn't offering her, and she's enjoying it. She also gets on really well with a guy there who she has to work with as he does stuff that ties into her work. Over the first few months it's just normal, then I hear loads about him every day as he's the only one she really talks to. So much so that after a few months he is told that he needs to stop the talking, she never is, or he will have to move. To make sure they can still have a laugh, which I fully appreciate and am fine with, they decide to use Google Hangouts via Gmail but also the app on the phones. After about a week of this it feels like it's now crept into every evening as well. My wife tells me that they're just work friends who get each other and have the same sense of humor but that's it. Over time, and a few arguments, I told her it felt like she was almost reliant of these messages and him. I got told I was being stupid but I can't shake the feeling. She said things like he makes me feel like the old me and that kind of stuff. If I bring it up though she tells me that she didn't mean it like that and I'm twisting it. We've argued plenty and I'm trying to understand. She says he's just a friend and had now admitted he's probably one of, if not her actual, closest friends. I mentioned about it being a possible E and she argued it until she went online to look what it was and conceded why it looks like that but if it was it was just a low level one. He can tell when she's upset and asks if she's okay and stuff. Her female friends don't see that anymore. Now, I love that she was enjoying work and making friends but I can't help feeling that there are more feelings to this than she's ever going to tell me. He has a really jealous wife who won't allow him to speak to girls, especially my wife, at the work party. I'm sure she doesn't know how much they chat. Can my wife, or anyone's wife, be close to another guy with it just being friends? To me it sounds like the beginning of a DP and we all know what that can lead on to. I don't want my wife to go back to being upset and depressed but I don't want the only way for her not to being another guy she's getting close to. She refuses to stop contact as she doesn't want to make work awkward and enjoys a laugh. She also says that it's me causing my own feelings due to being depressed and low because of redundancy. If she stops being friends and then I get over it she doesn't want to resent me. It's an awful mess leading to numerous arguments and it's hurting us both. Am I in the wrong with my feelings? I must have thought everything written here but I want more than anything to believe that it's just a friendship. I fear it's too late and it's gone too far, not physical but emotional. The challenge now is to speak to her about it without a massive argument and find out how to move forward, either as one or separately. She is putting herself ahead of me in our marriage. I can cope with it ahead of me normally but I am going through a bad time and there is just no support there. Apparently the old me would have been fine with it, while the new me, which I don't see as different, isn't. A reason I do trust her. She does tell me about everything and knows I have passwords to all her accounts so can see the chat. She does ask that I look with her but I could look anytime if I chose to. And she tells me she can't live without me or us as we've been together for so long and she loves me so much. She can't even begin to imagine life that way. It just seems that there is this one thing she is so pigheaded about and it's him and messaging him. She says nothing has or will ever happen and I should trust her to know and deal with it if he did ever make a move. As I've said, I'll have, and have had, the arguments when needed. I'll do what is required and believe me I can scream and shout with the best of them. I'm probably worried about my actions causing irreversible damage due to being told a lot that it's all in my head to my current feelings are. Work and stuff. I need to man up and take the bull by the horns. So, we had the discussion. It involved lots of tears, screaming, shouting and actually afterwards seems to have cleared the air. We have boundaries in place which include things being removed off phones and times it's appropriate to contact people. Not through asking but we have complete access to each other's accounts and it all seems to be much better so thanks all. One thing that does still irks me. I've seen it on a few posts that people have said don't confront too early. I can't help but feel I have. I've accused, put my foot down and done other things but having had things explain, read messages and looked at timings and such I honestly believe that I may have gone too early. I don't think I was wrong in any way but fear that by confronting when I did, I may have postponed what was happening and push it deeper underground. Just going to have to keep my eyes open for anything strange and follow it up quietly. Keeping it brief it was deletion of the messaging app and no contact outside of work hours, family first and complete openness which I firmly believe there to be. Contact in work isn't a problem as I know they have to work together but that's where it stays. 
I've also asked her to make an effort with her female friends to reignite their friendships, and she is doing that. As it stands, I'm happy and we feel to be back on track with time set aside for us. One night a week where we go out for a date night. I'm keeping my wits about me and will remain weary for a while. I spoke to her about contacting OMW. I don't have details to do it though, and said if it continued it would be the first thing I did. I know many will say I should do it now but as it stands where there is no proof for anything it would be my word against his and could cause problems at work. To some that may all seem tame but I know myself, my wife and our relationship best so I'm good with it. If it changes, I'll be straight on it. A year later, speaking to my wife last night she mentioned a colleague at work. He sounds like a decent enough chap but can be over friendly when chatting. He's open conversations with things like Morning Gorgeous and just yesterday I saw a chat that began Morning Beautiful. They use Hangouts as a communication tool at work. She's been completely open about it and said, he's just that type of guy. He works in their London office and she in a regional one. They've met once at a company meeting and it wasn't for long so there is no way I think anything at all is happening, but it still doesn't sit right someone talking to other people wives like that. He's married with kids as well. She discussed it with her colleague who said she thought it was a bit over friendly and wouldn't be pleased about it. I know how I need to proceed and what I need to do. Just FYI, I have indeed got a job. Got myself, confidence back, mostly, and things have been good. My plan is to watch quietly for now and step in when I feel it's required. As has been said, she told me openly and honestly about it, there was no need as I would never have known otherwise, and I don't want to discourage that. I don't for a minute think this is an EA, that's not to say it won't develop so I will watch. I have spoken to my wife who says she didn't think it was an issue and apologized. She will let him know to behave more appropriately which I thanked her for. I do think this is a case of a guy just being over friendly but I've had my say and will now observe from afar. At the moment I'm comfortable with being told and watching. We've discussed it and she understand my feeling and will act on them. With regards to the content of messages after the greeting it's always been about work. Have you done this? Is this possible? Can you take a look at this kind of thing? Usually finished with a thanks you're the best and a smile emoji. I have absolutely no reason to doubt my wife this time. She's not responding inappropriately or anything. Nothing is coming home as it's all in work time. It's all on the work system. If I found messages via other means or anything, I'd be straight on it but that's not the case, for now. They work at other ends of the country as well. My comment, there's no way I would address a woman in that manner unless it was either an inside joke or we had been flirting and I wish to continue it. If I came at a woman like that out of the blue it would be because I'd 100% want to get in her pants. Story 2, My Dumb Partner My story, just like everyone else's, is long, and I will try to make it as short as possible, and I can length with more details, in response to any questions. I will start off with a little background info. Please do not judge me or think I'm being a snowball. I'm the only daughter of Chinese immigrants. I'm an immigrant myself. Education is a huge focus in our culture. My parents came to America on my father's school visa, so he could get his MBA, but he later became a computer engineer. My mother was a doctor, but with no work visa, she had to wait tables, until she got that. In addition to paying off the schooling and licensing she needed to practice medicine, she studied English in high school. My parents studied and worked hard all their lives and have great jobs. They put me in expensive schools and college, and as a result, I have a good job as well, but only thanks to them. When I was in high school, my parents sent me to a psychiatrist to administer me the IQ exam. I scored a 141, and the proctor sent the score to Mensa, who accepted me. My parents only did this so that they could put that on my college applications. I dated many different types of men. Initially, most of these guys were intellectuals, but they were totally pretentious. Any conversations, a friendly debate, would quickly turn into an argument. They would usually make some underhanded cutting remark. The last straw for me was when I was hired by a firm, which I had spent a lot of time gathering references for, applying, not to mention, the amount of time I spent studying in college to get good grades, and spent my summers interning for, all for this moment. And the man I was married to at the moment had the audacity to tell me that I got hired based on my looks. So, I go through various serious relationships, and today I'm 28 and with a very very good man. He is kind, so loving. He is well balanced and gives me my space. He has his friends. He doesn't crowd me. But if he could, he'd be happy to spend every minute with me. I'm stubborn. He's not. If we argue, he will be the one to soften and give in. I need that, because I'm too bullheaded for my own good. And in turn, his good ways has taught me to now, give in sometimes, and be the first to apologize. I have apologized plenty of times in the past, they are few in between however, because I only apologize when I'm sincere and genuinely mean that I will not do it again. He wants and has everything a solid marriage is built on. We are not married. I can speak my insecurities about moving to the next step, and he is patient. He has a good routine. He wakes up every day at 5 a.m. He is a hard worker and has had the same job for over a decade. He goes to the gym five days a week. When he wanted a promotion at work, he worked on it through the right avenues and got it. 
He is a people person, everyone likes him. Not to mention, he is very pleasing on the eyes. I go through my moods, and he puts up with it. There were times that we went for a month without sleeping together, and he was patient, never lashing out at me, only asking me if there was something wrong. Now here's the problem. He is not intelligent. Intelligence equates to problem-solving skills. Not to be mistaken with being smart. I think he is very smart and knowledgeable in many areas. Lately, I decided to start chatting with him on basic rudimentary information, so that the man I love, I can start respecting more as my intellectual equal. So, for the past two weeks, I've asked him over and over these same questions, as well as explained them over and over. Refer to post number 70, in the gray, where I answer poster in theory, so that you all can understand the context in which this came about. Also know that he asked me to do this. Also know it was once instance, and I stopped right away. 1. What are the three branches of our government? Recently, he's getting these correct. 2. What makes up the legislative branch? And it's blank. I've explained over and over. It's Congress, and they're divided up into the Senate and the House of Representatives. So, two minutes later, I will ask him again, and he forgot. I did this about two days in a row, and several times, because I was a little concerned with his short-term memory. And every time, he forgot. There would be some of the most basic common sense things, like, we've been playing a grocery game similar to the McDonald's Monopoly game. Except this involves about 100 different stickers, with pics of various grocery items on it. I'll get about 12 of these, and it would take him forever to do it. About a month in, I realized, that instead of looking at the number, the game sheet was ordered in 1100, with pics, and you get the sheet sticks, with pics and the numbers underneath them to make them easier to find on game sheet, he was looking at pictures. And therefore, some of the pictures were even incorrectly matched. When I pointed it out to him, he got defensive and said, he was just doing it the way he wanted to do it. He is not a very defensive person, so for him to do this, I knew he was probably sensitive about a legitimate problem. Needless to say, I stopped quizzing him on the two question, after those several days, because I knew it was only going to make him uncomfortable. I did not realize until then, that he might have a learning disability. I had many times, given him instructions, and he would now and then mess it up. Yesterday, when we were driving back from somewhere, he noticed I was upset, which I was. He did another thing that was horribly un-smart, so I finally explained why I worried whenever he did these things that made me question his logic and intellect. I want to be serious with you, but how can I if I don't feel like I could trust my life in your hands? How can I if I don't feel like I could trust my partner to make some big decisions for us? Do I want to have kids with his man? I already have two. The answer is yes, he has great values that will rub off on our kids, should we have any. But what if he lacks common sense to keep a newborn safe? What if we decide to go camping, I don't, and an accident happens, and our cell phones are done? Does he have the brain capacity to utilize the current resources at hand? He is the perfect package of what I can say through my experience so far. A heart of gold. But I find myself at a standstill with moving forward because of my lack of respect for his brain power. Should I just stop wasting his time and let him go? Is it possible for him to change? Should I change and just be okay with it? I'm a festering type of person. Very few things bother me, but the ones that do, if not addressed, will turn into a blowout, and I mean this on a literal and figurative level. Am I just being too picky because I'm a nerd? He lacks, I am a, common sense, as well as an interest in the way the world works, but the latter is a non-issue for me. What started as a little project, to see if it could make him have some common interest, with me, quickly turned into a realization that he either one, had short-term memory problems, or two, some other issue that was causing his inability to process, retain, absorb information. I have no interest in forcing him to like what I like, regardless of whether he developed like or opposing views of the matter. I was diagnosed with moderate depression at a very young age, but I'm pretty sure I have a mild form of bipolar depression instead. I will have mild manic cycles, where I'm just feeling so good, and I'm spending big, making big plans, driving myself ragged at work, and then I'm down, down, down. Besides the periods of incessant shopping, he can't tell what's wrong, because when I'm sad, I am very robotic about it, I think I can control it by continuing to be relatively functional, but I can't. It comes out when I just become very detached and distant. Or when I go all day without texting or communicating with him, we live apart. And if I do, it would be very robotic. And besides all that, it's worse than what I'm letting on now. I have issues with showing emotion very much. I'm not an outwardly emotional person. But inside, I am. I'm just not sure how to show it. He knows I mean well, because although I don't remember to hug, hold, and be affectionate towards him, I do a lot of actions that show him. I cook him dinner every night we are together, four out of seven, besides the ones we eat out. I go out of my way to please his mother by helping her when she is hosting a dinner party. I would sit and talk to his grandparents at a family get-together, because they're wonderful souls with incredible stories, stories not enough of the kids care about to listen to. I went with my so to his grandparents' house to move out a couch to make way for his grandpa and plenty more. I'm not boasting of my character, I just know I have a warm heart. 
but I'm having all the trouble in the world learning how to exhibit it outwardly. He knows it, he puts up with it. He does patiently ask me to change though, and change, I am doing. Yes, I was always used to getting things my way as a child, but there weren't many things I asked to be my way. There was a circle hierarchy in my family of three growing up. I bossed my mom around, my mom bossed my dad around, and my dad bossed me around. My mom would do anything to spoil me with attention, she was so kind and giving. My dad had my respect, he is the perfect man. Works hard, is kind, says few words, but always figure out a way to show me he is proud. I don't want to write a book here, which it seems I'm already doing haha, but just take my word, I really respected my father, and my mother spoiled me rotten. If my mother wanted something done, she asked my father. He would then tell me to do it, and I would. Nothing would hurt me more than to hurt my father's feelings. So yes, I got most things my way, out of the few things that it was that I wanted. I assert myself in the workplace, through merit of hard work. I'm not a leader nor a follower, rather I do what's asked of me, to best make the team work. If there's something that needs to be done, I will do it. Do I do this for credit? Yes. In my experience, going above and edit beyond, and not announcing it, always gets you noticed. I over-research everything, so that I can know and understand every angle of my work and project at hand. I usually break ice with people I work with, by having them teach me something, to show I respect their knowledge. Which I bring up, because it is something, I do with my so, to show I respect him. Oh, and as to why treat a good man that way, I'm not quite sure how to answer that. Being the logical thinker that I hope I am, I was hoping to deductively reason my way to that answer myself. Our compatibility is the glue. Our opposites are the reasons why we work so well. Granted, it's something I value. For instance, he is frugal, lives in a small house that he almost completely owns, but whatever, work ethic of all those people you admire from the old days. He has a high school degree, then went to trade school to do something in the electrical department. I'm not sure what, today, he works on all the government buildings, in terms of electrical maintenance. He made a good but not high income. He does not waste anything. But I wholeheartedly do not consider his behavior cheap. I genuinely think he is a conservative and smart spender. I tell him all the time how I wish I could be more like him, and that he needs to help me. He is a great influence around my kids. He loves the outdoors. And in this age of technology, TV and video games, that is a great blessing. He is non-conflictual. He is very passive. He can listen to me when I'm upset about some co-parenting issues regarding my kid's dad, and he does not fuel my fire. He does not hold vendettas against their dad. He is in every way a huge support system. These are all the things I think about when I wonder if I'm wasting his time or not. So, my concern here is his lack of common sense and perhaps a short-term memory. There is something wrong with him. Sometimes, he talks loudly, loud in that way, where you know there's an auditory issue. And I've told him a couple times to ask his doctor about how he can go about getting his hearing checked. He never reads, which is understandable, but when he does have to read service manuals and he can't absorb it, he gets very frustrated during tests, but through his real-world experience, he passes. How do I know this? Because he tells me. I will give you an example of his lack of deductive reasoning. My younger, who was two at the time, was playing with his giant Legos. These giant Legos came in a clear cubicle hard plastic zipper bag. He's watching him, and I'm cooking. My son walks in with the bag on his head. I laugh and take it off. Later on, I thank him and tell him I thought he did really good with him, except for the bag on baby's head thing. I said all this jokingly, and truly because I thought it was funny. He allowed that one thing to happen, that is written as a warning on so many plastic bags. He says, well, there were holes in the bag. And I said, yes, but C is only one right now. He might think it's okay to put other bags over his head. This wasn't a big deal to me. Later on, the year, I was in my kid's room, and there was a plastic rod thing stuck into the electric outlet. I pulled it out, and asked my so if he knew anything about this. He said yes, he was there when my younger stuck it in. But since it's plastic, it won't conduct electricity. See, this is where my worries come in. He lets your eruptions slide and you feel that you get your way easily. When my father bossed me around, it would be to help him with the groceries or other chores. To which, I would help him, but hush him away so he could do more important things and I would do the chores myself. Sometimes he stayed and helped. Other times, he left. In my culture, we are supposed to do everything for our parents and our parents are supposed to live their lives for us, kids. But when it comes to outward show of emotions, well, that's where the robot comes in. I'm a single mother with two kids, two and four. My kids go to their dads on set, come back Sunday. I work about 50 to 60 hours a week. I have to take home a lot of work. He wakes up every day at 5 a.m. Even on the weekends, we see each other four out of seven nights. And out of three of them, the kids are there. Unless we go out, if he is in a horizontal position, couch or bed, he is asleep by 10 p.m. When we did not sleep together for 30 days, it's because I went to Vegas for a girl's trip and then took my kids to Florida for a family vacation. He had a family vacation in Gulf Shores, which my kids and I opted out of, because five of his family members canceled, so they canceled one cabin, 
as well as consolidated the remaining cabins with an extra toddler here and there. He was invited to the family vacation but was short on vacation days, because we are hoping that we can take a two-week vacation to my hometown of Shanghai, China, sometime in the next six months. This is why he is understanding. But even if it were for reasons worse than that, he would still be understanding. He is wonderful that way, and it's why I stand to learn a lot from him. On a separate note, I do not need him to like politics. When I state an intellectual equal, it does not mean that he needs to want to learn the same things I want to learn. I think that one of the most attractive qualities in a person is if they were to have the constant desire to learn. That is what I consider is an intellectual. That is what I mean by my intellectual equal. Whether we are learning together or learning from each other, I do not care. It did not have to be politics. I was testing the waters to see what he would have an interest in. I just have to point out that I don't feel that I'm settling for him. Plus, luckily, money is not an issue for either one of us. He has a decent income, with a ton of room for promotion, saves a lot. And I do well, which, for once, is probably the only good thing that has come out of working hard in school. It's allowed me to be able to find what is my relative true love, without having to use money as a considering factor. My parents have been with me through this. When I first started dating, they were like the typical Chinese parents, wanting their daughter to marry a doctor, lawyer, etc. But they've seen the pain I've been through, and they really love my so. But, despite all that, because of my culture, if I did not have a good job, I probably would not be able to consider him, because I place a lot of value in education. Although I would have preferred saving my parents' money and went to state schools, I've been brainwashed to believe private education is best, and the good ones are very, very expensive. My high school cost 23000 a year. Again, I wish my parents did not spend all that money on those schools. I really enjoyed my time there, best years of my life. But I see how hard my parents work, and as the Chinese daughter of immigrants I am, I just wish they did not have to spend all that on me. Yet, I would not have it any other way for my kids. My four-year-old's preschool costs almost five figures, and it's been worth every penny to me. He enjoys it so much, and learns so much. This is how many Chinese parents are, especially the ones that immigrated here from the big cities around China due to the one-child policy. However, I'm far from considering moving on. I've gone through many serious relationships and have developed a learning curve, just like everyone else, from learning from my relationship mistakes. He has too many good qualities for me to let go that easily. And really, this is a matter of me deciding if I'm wasting his time or not, rather than me deciding if I should settle for him. I actually could stay with him for a very long time, but unless I figure all this out, we wouldn't be moving forward. House shopping, live together, marriage, kids. I did not marry dad on purpose. He pushed for it. I could not even enter an engagement by the time we had progressed to that stage. I did not have kids in my marriage. My marriage is what traumatized me. I left there with bruises and had to go to the dentist for a root canal because he broke my tooth, leaving an exposed nerve. Dad had red flags, but they seemed very small compared to the big flags from my marriage. But the flags grew as the security of having a second child came into play. Now when I look back on that, I realize how naive I was to not have seen those flags. But that is the learning curve. My current so has a very normal level of jealousy. What I mean by that is, he only reacts if there is reason for it. There is no irrational jealousy. He is a very un-jealous and uncontrolling person. Is this good? Is this bad? I do not know for sure, but I'd say yes. I only know I went and sought out the other end of that spectrum after the marriage and kid's dad. So yes, unfortunately, I did go and do that, the opposite. My comment, it seems like you are at a stage where you are trying to determine the best course for you after some serious bumps in the road. It also sounds like you recovered and pulled yourself up by the bootstraps, hoping to avoid future pitfalls if you can. I can tell you aren't hanging your past over you so's head, but at the same time you may be feeling very risk-averse concerning the life you hope to have. Your feelings are your feelings, and while you don't want to stifle them, it also sounds like you are asking to see if you are way off track. It sounds like you are driven by your family culture, perhaps to a negative extent. In that case you should determine if what behavior and attitudes that are robotic, are they actually flowing from your heart and values? Or are you trying to fulfill expectations from an insatiable, perfectionist overseer residing in yourself? Talk. What do you guys think? Sub and I got along one coming up.